this is the Fat B man, and uh, I'm down here sharpening blades, and I'm doing a, a little video here on sharpening blades and also welding blades back. I have never thrown blades away. As you can see right here, there's a blade here that's been welded. And I've got a, another weld here, and I'll run this machine around. You can see this blade here has been welded about five times. I probably ran three to nine thousand board feet after it broke the first time. And people tell you you can't weld a blade. That's a bunch of malarney. And as you can see, I'm not taking a real heavy grind off. Uh, these blades can be welded back. What you have to do is cut a good square cut on the end of the blade and bevel each side and you can use a propane tank to weld these things. I welded a lot of them with silver solder and map gas. Very easy to do. You just overlap the blade about an eighth of an inch, flux it good, silver solder it, and you're good to go for quite a while. See here, working perfectly well. Here's another spot right here that, that's been welded. And I don't want to do a video real long, but well, you can see on the back side there's three or four more welds. Uh, if you're not up to doing all this here, you can weld it one time, throw it away. But I have taken blades and resharpened them as many as eight to 15 times. I'll sharpen them down to the height of the blade is three quarters of an inch. And at three quarters of an inch, I don't run them on a sawmill anymore. I'll cut them to length and use them on a vertical inside bandsaw. And you get your money's worth out of it. And uh, you're better off to do two to three light sharpenings on a blade than one heavy sharpening. And as you can see, I'm making sure that I'm, I'm getting the gullet. I'm getting the face, top angle, and I'm also getting a good cut. And what I usually do is I touch the top of the teeth. If they feel like a needle, they're sharp. You can also look at the faces, check the faces, make sure you got a good point on them and you're getting a good grind on them. Now I'm going to shut the grinder off, loosen the clamp up, and I want to rotate this around to where you can see that we got uh, a lot more uh, welds on this blade here. I want to do it so I don't break this uh, video apart. You can see it's not been edited or nothing. What I do is pull this around and get this head up just a little bit. All right, we're coming around now. Here, here's two welds together. Another weld, that's three in a row there. This blade has gotten patched five or six times. There's uh, another one, and I got a, a couple coming around the back there. So, I hope this answers questions that people tell you that when the blade breaks, throw it away. I have taken blades that people have given me or have brought to me to be resharpened with a dozen to a half a dozen teeth knocked off hitting metal. Sharpen them, set them, they'll cut just as good as a new one, if not better. Uh, I prefer a 21 to 23 thousandths set on my uh, setter. And uh, I was using a, a different brand uh, setter, and uh, I thought I was doing good. It cut a log, but this setter and sharpener that I got now is more of a professional setup, and it's really accurate. And you don't know you're doing a bad job sharpening your blade until you really get a good outfit. Here's the, the setter that I'm using. 
cook setter. It's got its dual action here. You can set both sides at the same time. I'm really pleased with it. Um, it's a good outlay of money for you when you first start, but I got this set up to do my own. I'm a beekeeper. I build all my own boxes. We saw several thousand feet of lumber a month to build and upgrade all of our bee boxes and stuff. And I hope this little video helps you. It's on the, the channel, the Fat Bee Man channel on YouTube. Thanks for watching.